There we go. And it's also nice because the audio stays just perfectly balanced already. Now with browser sources, should I add chat? The new subscription feature in case anyone actually does. Highly doubt it though, it's just an option. And... There we go. Everything that is not useless. Alright. We should also make it so we're not saying we're streaming Grimrock 2. Ah, yes. All zero people who are watching me. Excellent. I feel so overjoyed. <sighs> well... I had some runs going on in the background, but this is a progression-based game, and they hide the cards behind progression. As a result, I like having options, and I don't feel like this game could be done justice by giving everyone a snapshot of it when I'm in the middle of the run. Or, sorry, when I'm at the very beginning. In fact, I find that quite boring and dull. So, first things first, I'm going to reduce the effects volume, because it seems to be the only thing causing me problems, and I'm going to bend my current run. Now, for those who have never played Slay the Spire before, Slay the Spire is a deck building game. Or a hybridization of deck building, roguelike, and role playing game, kind of. At least that's the three things I would define it under. You take one of currently only two characters who have their own strengths, weaknesses, and card types in general, and try to reach the top of an epitomous spire in spite of waves upon waves of horrid abominations, creatures, and bosses that would prevent you from doing so, all the while gathering treasures, loot, and go treasures, loot, gold, and curses before you reach the top of the spire and whatever's guarding it at the time. And whenever you die, you're sent back to the very beginning to try once again. Fully reset, but not without some form of progress. I'll show... I don't have anyone here right now. I also just realized I'm not in my own livestream chat. There we go. Okay. Hang on. Okay, OBS is working. Why is Discord not... There we go. Discord's working now. Everything's working. I'm going to take a character that I am bad at through it first. As I just can never seem to get the Ironclad just right. Greetings, giant whaleful abomination from beyond the grave. <sighs> no bonuses for me. So, this is the map of the spire. Or more accurately, the first level of the spire. You always start at the bottom of the map and need to choose one of the predefined routes to head on through. And once again, our good friends have left our lovely dog, Cody, with us once again, and it cannot remain calm. So we're going to have intermittent barks from beyond the realms. Who knew? So, we have these pathways to go through. They branch, intertwine, and contain a variety of things that we can encounter. But what's most important to me, or at least what I prioritize, or question marks, for they have the benefit of being the only real source of randomness in the run, but also one of the few sources of treasures, much like my burning blood. So, I am going to pick... Well, it really doesn't matter where I go. So I'm going to pick this one to begin with. So... You have a deck of 10 cards to begin with. They're always the same. These do not change. The starting cards never change, so you're always at the same power level. You just have more things you can do. Much like most of the Binding of Isaac games, if anyone has ever played that or otherwise. You get a hand of five to begin with to do whatever you wish with. You draw five cards of that deck and you can play any amount of them as you have energy. And what I mean by that is, 
each card has their cost in their upper left hand corner that you can uh, I'm really bad at explaining things unless I've done it three or four times. Hence why I so rarely if ever do any form of... Rarely if ever do any form of review or preview anymore, just because I'm really awful at them and need to practice. Let's try this again, hopefully the hand that makes more sense. All characters have three energy. You can always see this in the bottom left-hand corner. Energy is required to play cards. Your cards have their costs in their upper left-hand corner, which range from zero to, I think the highest I've ever seen is four. And you can only play as many cards as you have energy, and the cards cost. If that it probably makes an amount of sense, I just can't put it into ver adequate words that would make sense to a sensible human being. Above your enemies, you can see there, in addition to your cards you're playing and the damage that you're dealing, above your enemies you can see their, uh, their intents. You have to design your actions around their intents to try to keep your health total as high as possible. If you don't, your health total drops, and your health total carries throughout the whole game. Your health total hitting zero means you die. Unceremoniously. Thankfully, the first couple of combats are easy, and it's easy to avoid damage. The Ironclad also heals himself, so you're kind of expected to take more than the average amount of damage that most characters, well, the two characters would take. At the end of each fight, you're given loot. Gold, a card, and occasionally a potion, which is kind of some of your player character's way to break the rules. You can take this card and increase your deck size. I kind of instant picked this just because I know it's a good card. But I really shouldn't do that for explanatory purposes. But I will. So we go to our first question mark and get one of our random events. Oh, the woman in blue from the darkness an arm pulls you into a small shop. As your eyes adjust, you see a pale woman in sharp clothes gesturing towards a wall of potions. Buy a potion now, she states imperatively. I want to hold on to the gold for an actual shop, so I'll buy exactly one potion and get one of the okay ones considering my objective. And since you've seen two of the potential things on the legend, I might as well explain everything in on the map, as I've already explained a bunch of everything else. Each one of these regular little faces is just a normal enemy. Its normal enemy encounters are, well, normal. It's just a smattering of enemies that belong to the area that they're in. They're generally the ones you can avoid taking damage on if you play your cards right, although as time progresses they become stronger. Question marks are random events. They can be quite literally anything. Treasure chests give you immediate relics, and if you have anything else that modifies those relics, well, that's where modifications come into play. Elites are tougher than normal enemies, but they drop from the they drop items from the same pool of treasures, so it's to your benefit to fight elites if you can. And Campfires allow you to heal up, one of the few sources of healing you have in the game, or do something else with cards that you aren't able to see yet, but when we get there I'll explain the other system of progression in the game. I have very little ability to avoid taking damage here as I didn't draw any form of blocking, but ah well. I'll take a casual 7 on the chin. I'm going to try to avoid taking damage from here on out, as taking damage from this opponent usually, usually, will lead to a lot of negatives in the future. Now you see that occasionally my hits apply something called vulnerable to your enemy. Certain cards will apply status effects. These status effects can range from anything to reducing damage dealt to increasing damage taken, to, I don't think there's a stun effect yet that I've found. 
increasing strength, so increasing the straight damage of the enemy, which we've already seen on several occasions, and a variety of other effects. The effect I applied to him is vulnerable. He takes 50% more damage from my swings. You only see this when my card hovers over them. He, apply, he has applied weakened to me, so my attacks deal a quarter... One quarter less damage. They don't deal a quarter damage. There's a massive difference between that. And oh boy, if that was deal a quarter, that would suck. I'm gonna get some water, because I've already been explaining constantly. Well, it looks like we killed him. We took... Oh, no we didn't. Weakened. Right. Right. Well, I screwed up. I don't want to take 12, so I'm just going to poison him and kill him. I would rather save that potion for whatever enemy we're fighting there. But who knows? I could have gotten screwed. <sighs> it's actually a tough choice. So anytime you're given the ability to choose a card, it's always one of three, each one being a random rarity. I tend to build the Ironclad and the other character, the Silent, to be very defensive. Shrugging it off is a very good defensive card. But I don't think it's good enough with the Ironclad. I don't have anything worth dual wielding. So I guess we go with Disarm? But that doesn't really help that often. Yeah, I might as well try it. I've heard it was very good. So random encounters can also include things like this, where you're fighting an absolute metric ton of enemies, or at least more than the average amount. But since I can kill the small one right away, I will gladly kill the small one. So what are you gonna do? So enemies can sometimes shove cards into your deck. This isn't as problematic as it sounds, except most of the cards generally don't do anything or give you massive negatives associated with them. Wound being unplayable isn't really that bad, considering I can draw extra cards on my turn, except in this instance where it's quite awful as the danger is that he can fill up my deck with nothing but wounds. And if he does that, well, naturally I get screwed. But things that are artificially added to your deck in a fight will disappear when you leave the fight. Hmm. None of those cards speak to me. But I do kind of need something. And Searing Blow might be an interesting strategy, because it could be a defensive strategy where I try to find Searing Blow as often and just keep hitting them with that. So you know what? Why not? And you know what? Let's go fight an elite. I love doing elite fights. Oh, baby. Well, I don't need to heal. Sorry. As you make your way down a long corridor, you see a banana, a donut, and a box floating about. No, upon closer inspection, they are tied to strings coming from holes in the ceiling. There's a quiet cackling from above as you approach the objects. What do you do? I could heal myself quite easily just by eating the banana. I could eat the donut and gain a max HP boost, which isn't that bad, but the relic is usually more important but this will make my deck worse by adding a curse to this. Hey, you grab the box and said you find a relic. However, you really crave the donut. You are filled with sadness, but mostly regret. At the end of your turn, lose one HP for each card in hand. We're gonna try to get rid of that as soon as possible, but now, on to the boss fight, or the elite. Um, I have no way to improve this. However, there's no reason not to just immediately hit him with Searing Blow. I've reduced his damage by as much as I can. But I guess I'm just going to be tanking shots for a while. Because I could block, but this guy in particular is really annoying. 
Because if you don't DPS him down, what's the real difference that 5 armor makes? So I would take 11, but I would only deal 12 to him, and he has a massive health total. This elite, which I've fought many a time, has the effect where he is not active for the first couple of rounds of combat. You could technically use this to apply any form of status effect that you choose. It's just... I don't have anything in particular that I'd be interested in. So you deal 18, but all of you deal 9, so 18 plus 9 is 27. It deals the same amount either way. Alright, you're going to hit me with the Siphon Soul. But Siphon Soul isn't that bad. Um, ugh. I'd love to kill you, but I don't think I'll get the chance, so instead I'll just take only one for this turn. I wanted to go into the other Siphon Soul, because even though that drops my attack and armor again... <sighs> Got a Searing Blow and a Bash. But I'll draw that next turn, and next turn's the Siphon Soul turn. Certain enemies end up in patterns that repeat endlessly. If you know what the pattern is, you can abuse it however you wish. Now, can I kill you? I can't, but I can set you up to die next turn by keeping the Vulnerable on you. Now, I nearly lost all my health in the process of doing this. So the relic he would give me better be worth it. Now, game, I know you can do better than this. There we go. He's down. Meat on the bone. My HP is below half. Heal. Excellent, I guess. Ah, uh, you know what? We'll take a cleave, as it's better than our strikes. Now, good shopkeep, good shopkeep, what do you have? Has a rare card. Oh, uh, card rarity is determined by gray being common, blue being rare, gold being basically impossible to get under most circumstances. Or at least the highest rarity, and thus usually the best thing to have. I would like to take the anchor, because it allows me to do other things in the start of my combat, but that means I can't do anything else. But instead of the anchor, I could take Metallicize, which is technically the anchor, but better, because I always have block at the start of my turns then, or end of my turn. Um, I'll take Metallicize, and then I'm going to ditch I have one shrug it off so I can ditch a single defend and not be worse for wear. I could risk it and go for another elite. I can't encounter the same elite twice unless I encounter more than three, I think. And I've got a potion that gives me 12 block on a turn I might need it. So you know what I'm gonna do? Let's play it risky and go for another elite. Good. It's just the gremlin knob. I'm gonna want to play you now. And then we'll weaken you. Because I can just deal with anything else that happens. And now I've got a passive 3 damage reduction a turn. Oh, of course I don't get you early. You're not useful. Full on damage. I think that weakens me. No, it makes me vulnerable. I can take three this early on. It's a status effect that can kill me, though. I want to defend. Okay, what would I actually get off of defending? 17... He gains 2 strength, which amplifies to 3, so he deals 24. But I block 7... I block 20 of it. 
Yeah, there's no downside to this. Except for future turns. So I'll take four instead. And just hope I can... Might have screwed up here. Just a little bit. I'm alive. The vulnerable wears off. Maybe I can gain enough armor. Now this is a horrible situation to be in. This was a this was very poor risk assessment, I'm not going to lie. Rather poor risk assessment. But I block the blow at least. But I die regardless. And that's how this game goes. If you're greedy, no risk, no reward. Can be greedy, but usually a poor idea. Alright, what do I get? Choose an exhausted card and put it in your hand. Exhaust. The top card of your draw pile and exhaust it. Alright. So the other form of progression in this game is that whenever you unlock something, it will show up in future runs. This was explained at the beginning, of, or when I had started the... Yep, Zenus, rip indeed. But now we're going to play my specialty, The Silent.